Hi, I'm Mari Edlin with the Digital Health Summit, and this is my guest today, Drew Schiller with Validic. And I wanted to ask you a few questions, but based on your panel today. And one of them is, what kind of information and what sort of outcomes do you get by using digital and wearables in your clinical trials? Yeah, sure. So in a in a traditional in a traditional trial setting, uh, what you get are typically uh, very episodic data. So you get uh, data when a patient either reports something through a patient reported outcome survey, or you get uh, data when a patient comes in for a, a clinic visit. But what you don't have is a lot of continuous data. And so from wearables, you are actually able to get a lot of continuous data that kind of connect the dots between the episodes of, of typical reporting. So for example, if you wanted to track um, sleep or acti act, uh, activity, you can all of a sudden start to really get a really full 360 degree view of what's happening in the patient's day-to-day -day life. What about things like satisfaction? Can you get that from the wearables? Satisfaction is an interesting one. Um, there is, are no uh, correlations, as far as uh, I know, that directly relate you know, something like physical activity or something like sleep directly to patient satisfaction. However, I think that if you were to look at uh, maybe an increase in physical activity or an increase in the amount of sleep, uh, you can, and you can also combine that with some patient report outcomes asking the patient um, how, how satisfied they feel in the trial or how happy they feel, I think that you could certainly begin to draw some, uh, some correlations there and, and be able to leverage wearables for that measure. And what sort of feedback do you get for participants using these wearables? Um, so I don't run the trials myself. Okay. Um, so my company connects the data from all of the wearables and the in-home medical devices and the, the health apps into the trial. And so, um, so the data that our, our customers on the, on the trial side usually get um, are uh, anything from, from the, you know, the FDA medical data, so blood glucose monitors, mo uh, uh, blood pressure data, that type of thing, um, all the way through to the actual you know, caloric burn, uh, distance walked, et cetera, from, uh, from wearables. So since you're sitting on that other side, so to speak, what do you then do with that data? Yeah, sure. So, so we are the we are the smart conduit. So, um, Validic connects patient-generated data from all of those devices, and we provide one simple access point for pharma companies. So, um, what we do is we try to make the data from all those disparate sources uh, easily consumable, easily digestible, and easily actionable. And that way, if uh, in one particular trial uh, an investigator wants to use this blood pressure monitor from from that device manufacturer, and then then the next trial a different investigator wants to use a different blood pressure monitor or a Another device entirely, or the blood pressure monitor and another device, um, they only they don't have to build another connection to to more data sources. So really, we're we're making the trials more efficient to run and, and faster to get up and, and, and going. Is this data anonymous? So the data that flows through our system is de-identified, and as with with all clinical trials, you know the de-identification of data is really really important. So um, it is able to be um, re-identified at some point by uh, by a trial somewhere. Uh, that's just that's part of the um, part of the protocols, but in terms of the data that flows through our system and typically where it's uh, stored um, uh, by our, our customers in the pharma and clinical trial space, certainly, yeah, it's, it is uh, de-identified. Do you see any companies that are running these trials, pharmaceutical companies, using different uh, devices, et cetera, that generate this kind of data in order to recruit people for their trials, or are they mostly using them for people who are already in the trials? Yeah, that's a really great question. There, so there are a lot of opportunities for recruitment, um, and I think that there have been some things tried by some of our partners. Uh, I know that Quintiles uh, uh, and Medidata are two partners that we work really closely with, and they've been they've been experimenting with with recruitment. But um, fundamentally speaking, uh, it's it's much more valuable for exploratory to understand a little bit more about a disease type before you do the trial, and then also actually collecting data during the trial for the purposes of of submission to FDA. This may take too long of, a, of an answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Can you give me sort of a hypothetical situation about? how they, the devices are used and then what sort of data it generates. Yeah, and sure, absolutely. So uh, imagine uh, if you have uh, an arthritis drug and you wanted to look at how well is, is somebody performing or how well is the drug uh, helping this patient in terms of, of, of improving their arthritis condition. 
So in a, in a typical setting, what you're going to do is you're going to look at uh, what happens um, in the first uh, uh, 90 to 120 minutes after the patient wakes up, because uh, after the participant wakes up. And the reason is because um, you know, your body's been sedentary for a long time, it, you build up a lot of, a, a lot of uh, acid in the joints and you have problems, uh, more, more trouble with movement and, and more pain. And so what you can do with, uh, so what you typically would, would do is you would take um, patient reported outcomes and patient will wake up, you know, how well did you sleep and then you know, how well did you, or how, how well did you move, how much pain did you have, that type of thing. But this is all retrospective and it's the patient trying to remember things. Um, patients don't typically remember things well, like how well they slept. Um, it turns out that people don't often sleep as well as they think they do. <laughs> um, so if you were to put a simple wearable device on the person, then all of a sudden you can know exactly how well the person slept, and you can know exactly, because it's, there's actigraphy on the device itself, um, you can know exactly how much movement the patient had uh, uh, in the first 90 to 120 minutes. And so, um, so that level of detail and data is, is an actual uh, fact, as opposed to something that was remembered um, later in the day and self-reported. And so you can, of course, still get the, the pain score is still going to have to be self-reported because there's no uh, wearable measurement of that. Um, but, you know, I think that's a real opportunity. That, that's an example of an opportunity where you could use wearables and how that data would, would benefit it. Great. Thank you, Drew, for joining us. This is Drew Schiller from Valetic, and I'm Ari Evan from the Digital Health Summit. <laughs>